Hey guys, I'm. This is going to be the start of the Exu Shotgun Build Guide. Um, I'm gonna just kind of approach it in a, just sort of a linear way. I'm gonna just go over how I make all the components work and how to place them, and roughly how to measure them. I don't know that I'll be doing a ton of the cutting and and those sorts of things on on film, but we'll see what what we can do you know we'll see how it goes um i've already prepared the magazine i have a video for that that will be i'll link to all the videos in this this one so this will be sort of a directory to get to all of them uh when they're made it's this is going to be at least a few weeks of of work to get all these videos put together and to get the shotgun built it's not a small mod. If you are not really comfortable both with chopping up a $65 shell or $80 with shipping and with installing the parts and making all kinds of cuts, um, I had to make, on the first one, I had to make some cosmetic additions that were hand-built. Hand they were scratch-built. Um, they could have been modeled, but I didn't want to. I didn't... I've been getting more comfortable with 3D printing myself, so, um, and we didn't have actually a, a full-size spool. We had little ones that came with like a printing pen when we got our printer, so, um, so this is sort of new for me. Anyway, um, so to start, this video, as, as I said, is going to be like a directory, but it's also going to be going over the basic components that you'll need. So you need the Exus um, and the, the long shot internal. So if you don't have those and you're probably going to want a plastic trigger because you're going to need to modify that. Um, I have done the markups on this already in marker. There are marks for where you're going to cut in the barrels. You're going to remove this entire whatever that is, uh, guide here, that's just going to completely go. So there won't be screws holding in the bottom here, only in these areas. You're going to be drilling holes into here, and I'm going to have to double check the measurements on that. I can't remember which one I was supposed to go with, I have two holes, here, two lines here, so. Um, I have the two lines drawn out, not exactly, I have to, I can't remember exactly how I cut those out for the shell stop and uh, shell interrupter. Those are internal parts that allow it to index. Um, there's the ejection port, and that about covers all of the external cuts that you'll be making. Internally, pretty much all of this ribbing and the barrel holding here is going to go. You're going to leave almost nothing here. All of this will pretty much go. This isn't one one way. You can't go back from this if you make it this way. So, you know, be prepared for that. Um, you're going to have to cut the trigger a whole lot. All of this area is going to have to be removed back up to this square here. And I think that that has to get cut out too, if I remember correctly. Um, some of this I'm going to have to remember as we go. And, uh, and then finally, the last thing that I'm going to cover in this video, and I'll probably release two um, when I post this. The last thing is the parts. You need all of these printed. You need the lifter. This one uh, had some warping and printing, but with some epoxy putty and repairing, it should be absolutely fine for function. This just has to be flat. You know, the shell just has to sit on it. That'll be easy for me to fix. So... Um, don't mind that. You need the shell stop. This is the longer one. This will go on the left side of the shell. This is what indexes the single shell. Like when it's pulled back, this lets a shell in. This is the shell interrupter. What this one does is when the um, <coughs> bolt and uh, pump are all the way forward, this one gets pushed open and lets the shells come forward in the magazine. After you, after you prime, this one goes back into place. And so what it'll do is it allows the shells to go through when it, when it's open, which is in the forward position. And then when it's closed, 
or when the bolt goes back, it comes in the way, so it'll slide around like this, and then stop the next one from coming in. So this is what makes it allow just one shell. And then you need the two hinges, and I will go over how to install the hinges. These need to go together like this, but you need to, we need to add a screw and a spring to it. And then um, finally, well not finally, you need these two guys. These could be made out of ABS or polycarbonate. They're just little little cams to um, interact with the shell stops. They just go like this and they make it so that it moves. So comes here, moves like this. Is Those are extremely simple. And then finally, you need a bolt. Now I had a new bolt, but I put it in the original ASG-18 to test something. So. It, and that was the bolt mark 10 that's uploaded that is uploaded onto thingiverse but i'm going to recommend the bolt mark 9 anyway just because the 10 isn't necessarily better you can use it what the difference is the the hook which is broken off of this one is a little bit bigger than on this and the whole thing is deeper so it can allow for thicker foam which i will get to the foam that i've used it works, but I may have found a way to make better shell ejection using different foam. And I'll go over that when I go over how to prepare the bolt. So I will prepare this one for the video, but for this actual build, I'm gonna use this one with new foam that was from the original ASG-18. Um, and I think that about covers it. When you print, oh, and then I guess actually this is the last, this is the breech. So this is where the shells go into. Um, so they come up on the lifter and they get pushed in like this and then centered in. So this does have some give that if it got rotated, it won't shoot. So you might have to bore out the material here. For shooting megas, you'll definitely have to bore out these middle tabs some. That shouldn't be a big deal. I mean, that should be quick work with a Dremel. And the shell has to slide in without any significant friction. If it's not, then it's either an older version or it printed too small and you'll need to print it again because if the shells can't go in, it will, um, in, when it comes to pull the shell out, if there's too much force on here, it'll shear the, the, uh, extractor, um, extractor rod, extractor hook right off and then it'll be totally useless. So, um, and these are, these are all printed in PLA plastic. I haven't had problems with that for the most part, but um, that is something to keep in mind that they could be damaged. Um, they can get damaged by heat warping them. So that's all worth considering. If you could print them in ABS plastic or um, PTG, you might want to, but um, I have run the ASG-18 at well now, like about four wars, and never had a problem with a single one of my printed parts in the war. Um, I've never had an issue with it like failing on me or them failing in, in mid-game or anything like that. So the PLA seems to be more than, more than sufficient. And in some cases, like the shell stop, the rigidity of the PLA plastic is is pretty crucial for this functioning properly because it's going to be under force from this direction and if it can bend when i tried making this out of abs and polycarbonate they did not have the rigidity necessary to work when i cut when i scratch built these parts which is part of why i started printing all of them so um i think that about covers most of it i'm not going to go over how to do the sludge fire stock probably maybe i will but for for these for what the build guide is supposed to do, I'm mostly going to go over how to make a functional pump action shotgun with the parts that I've designed and how to install them. And there might be a lot of back and forth and fidgeting and problems that have to be solved um, as I go. And I'll just try to to address that. If that happens, I'll make note of it in the video. So, um. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you're all excited for this. Um, I I hope it works out okay. There's 